So one of my patrons recently brought something to my attention and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And so I wanted to make a video about it and just talk a little bit on this Matt Mercer effect and what it has been doing to some D&D tables and groups. Now, the phrase Matt Mercer effect all started as far as I can tell with a Reddit post, which I'll link down below if you guys want to read the whole thing. But the effect itself has seemed to be seeping into the Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop RPG community for a while. And I want to be clear here that this is not a good thing for D&D role players. To paraphrase the post, a dungeon master went to Reddit looking for advice on how to beat the Matt Mercer effect where his players were huge fans of Matt Mercer and Critical Role before they ever even picked up a single D20. So they've come to him asking him questions of how similar his game will be to Matt's and through their role play, the DM is seeing them act and RP in ways that are identical to the Critical Role cast, which in essence boils down to their expectations for the game is to be just like Critical Roles and they are trying to play their characters exactly like the cast does. I'll get to my thoughts and advice here in a minute, but I want to add that Matt Mercer himself apparently caught wind of this post and he, he actually responded to it. And again, it's too long to read all of it, but the short of it is that Matt was heartbroken that Critical Role might be affecting the player's expectations so strongly of what a Dungeons and Dragons game should look like that it's putting a ton of pressure on DMs to be just like him or setting the players up for disappointment when the game ends up a little bit different. Then he talks about how much of the responsibility of the gaming experience falls onto the players to bring it in their own unique way instead of trying to copy Sam or the rest of the cast. Oh man, all right guys, we need to talk about this because first off, I think that Matt is totally right, but I also think he may have missed a few key points and so I'd kind of like to add my voice to Matt's here and just expand on it. Secondly, I think that this Matt Mercer effect goes beyond expecting the game world, NPC voices, et cetera, to be like Critical Roles. And I've also seen several Reddit and Twitter posts where DMs are completely stressed out about their capabilities, worrying more about how closely they can emulate Matt instead of focusing on their own skill sets and shared gaming experience with their friends. All right, let me start off by echoing a little bit of what Matt said. Playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons should be a shared intimate experience with your friends first and foremost. And I call it an intimate experience because that's what it is. It's something really just for you and your friends, except for the maybe 250 games streamed on Twitch and YouTube throughout a given week. For the most part, the only people who will ever get to really share in your games laughs and exciting triumphs and tragic losses are you and your friends. Guys, please don't rob yourself of your own voice, your own creativity, and your own role play experience by purely trying to emulate what the cast of Critical Role or my show, Saber Dice, or Maze Arcana are doing at the table. 99.9% .9 of people who play Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition are not published authors or professional actors. 99.8% .8 of people aren't even actively writing or pursuing acting. But at the table with your friends, this is your chance to get to bring what you want to a character as you try to bring them to life. So please don't let Sam Regal, myself, or Satine Phoenix drown out your voice. It's perfectly okay to draw inspiration from things that you love, like Critical Role or Star Wars, but I'd advise you to do just that. Draw inspiration from those things but don't try to just emulate them. What you do at the table with your friends should matter, and, and that's the magic of D&D. Remember, Dungeons & Dragons has been around a long time before 5th edition and the popularity of streaming D&D games. I mean, people used to have literally no idea how other people played the game or what the right amount of combat or role play was in a session. The only thing they had for decades that's, that's a word for more the decades, was literally what they and their friends brought to the table and nothing else. And they were fine. They still shared laughs and tears and everything in between with their friends as they went off on grand adventures that they knew that no one else in the world would be a part of. It was their shared intimate experience. It was their story. It was their magic to keep. Now for dungeon masters who are feeling the pressure of the Matt Mercer effect and stressing out about 
how to be just as good as Matt. Let me just stop you right there. It's not Matt's game, guys. It's your game. Your players aren't professional actors, and the way Critical Role plays the game of Dungeons & Dragons isn't the only right way to play D&D. Don't let what Matt does and the effort he puts in stress you out while you are enjoying a hobby. Because that's all D&D really is at the end of the day, a hobby. And hobbies should be fun. Dare I say, if your hobby isn't fun, that's when you know you're doing it wrong. Yes, like most hobbies, the more you get into it, the more you'll want to improve and get better at it. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally, completely natural. My wife and I, I love to bowl and I enjoy trying out new things when we go bowling to try to get my abysmal average up from 130. But if any of you out there bowl for fun, I'm betting you don't get stressed out because you're not as good as a professional bowler. When you play some Overwatch or Apex Legends with your friends, you probably don't get stressed out that you aren't as good as Jane or Shroud. Sure, you can aspire to be as skilled as those guys, and you might even have specific things you're working on that you're working on trying to improve. But if you're loading into a game with your friends, stressed out about trying to get three sliding shots with the wingman to impress your Twitch stream of six people, let me just say, you might be approaching it in an unhealthy way. And let me say, as a talking head Dungeons & Dragons advice channel, guys, please don't let me affect your game. Don't let WebDM or Nerdarchy or How To Be A Great GM or XP To Level 3 affect you to a point that you think everything we say is gospel. As someone who has spent hours and hours getting to know all of those people and becoming friends with them, I can say this confidently. We're all a bunch of idiots with huge egos. And to be frank, not to name any names, <coughs> but some of our egos are so big, you would be wildly disappointed to really get to know us. I hate alignment. I don't think it adds anything to the game. I think if it were never introduced to the game, it would have zero effect on D&D's success or popularity. So what? If you like alignment, use alignment. If you feel it helps your group, great. I like to talk about how much I hate the alignment system because guess what? Like any nerd you meet in a comic shop, I like to argue about it and I enjoy heated debates. Sure, I want to convince you to stop using it, but I don't really want to convince everyone to stop using it. My entire channel is really about creating dialogue, not to convince everyone to shape their games the way that I prefer to play or what I personally deem as fun. And the same thing should be said about uh, Matt Colville. Sure, he may come up with something cool in a video that inspires you, and if you want to steal that, then awesome, man, steal away. Please don't think you have to play like us or feel pressured to start streaming your games. You should be focusing on the fun, not if your concurrent viewers fell from 10 to 6 halfway through the game because you felt like one of your players was kind of dragging the game a bit. There is a reason my patron game is not streamed. And when all of my players asked if we would be streaming this game, I told them, hell no, we're not going to be streaming it. I wanted them to show up and laugh and have a shared experience just for us. If I want to shop for 25 minutes with a hilarious NPC shopkeep, we're going to do that. If the session is naturally one of heavy RP or the entire three hours is us finishing up a massive fight, we're going to do that. If all we want to do is sit around and role play and describe just how black everyone's cloak is, guess what? We're going to do that. So go play. Laugh with your friends. Tell an absurd story that only the four or five of you will laugh about when it gets brought up years later as an inside joke. Enjoy Critical Role and, you know, watch my videos and Matt Colville's videos and steal from us when we inspire you. But please, I'm begging you, don't lose your voice. It's the most important thing you get to share with your friends. This is the part of the video where I ask a question, thank the patrons and invite new people to subscribe to the channel down below. But instead, I'll just leave you with this. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody and may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.